Chris, how far we'd got, we're mentioning this wonderful Extra Fringe Festival catalogue. Oh, uh, you. Yeah. Which has arrived. Uh, you can have a look at it if you like. And um, it's it's available at just outside the Barnfield Theatre. I don't think it's on display in the Phoenix yet. Okay. I had a look, but out, outside the Barnfield Theatre, they've got copies of it. And is the Fringe Festival going to be in the Phoenix? Some of it will, yeah. It's in both both places. Oh. Both places. And um, there's a playwright for hire. And, okay. Um, I've decided to invest three quid and get all of my plays sorted out. Okay. So we've discussed um, DJ Buttons. Yeah. We'll, we'll get a version of that finished off or you know moved on a bit and um, what have you decided about DJ Button well I'm I'm conflicted Chris I don't know what to do because um, I don't think Scat is going to accept a script I don't think if you sat Scat down and said look we're now going to do scene one and your lines are as follows and you have to keep quiet until your lines <laughs> come along do you think it's going to work no nope. No. No, no. <laughs> well, um, but at the same time, I do realise now how much my ideas around it were based on his situation. Um, so if you rewrote it for somebody else, you'd have to alter quite a lot of it. I mean, you were prepared to, to be DJ Buttons for some of the time. Yeah. But I'd have to move on all the songs, build it around you. Um, but maybe maybe that's what we've got to do. Yeah, should, maybe. Should we do another version based around you? Yeah. And then we'll try and get these playwrights for hire to do you, a, a you general wrote purpose. You wrote it. I wrote it. Yeah. I wrote it written apart for myself and JD. We're the grumpy ones. Okay. There could be other people who play Oh, it. no, we're <laughs> not. <laughs> well, oh, yes, you are. Yeah, well, that's right. That's we're right. getting the script. <laughs> well, we're, we're, get, yes, yeah, we're, getting, we're getting the first yeah, bit. Yeah, we're getting some dialogue. <laughs> we're getting some, should we do the other bit where we say... Well, I think it, it it does revolve around the buttons. I'll get onto another one about the buttons. That, uh, Play the music. <laughs> that's what we. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's what you. you no, know, you're getting into our role. You're getting into one of the grumpy ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, there are basically the two. I, the other thing I'm not sure, Chris, do you, have you have you been to a proper st- you know a proper studio, a, B, a BBC studio or something like that? No. Um, is it really true that the presenters don't actually touch the buttons? There's somebody, there's somebody else there, sort of making sure it all fits together. Um, from what I've heard, yes. So it actually is po- theoretically possible, plausible, that yeah. there would be these two people talking away, and there'd be some other poor person who had to press the buttons at the right time. Yeah. Okay, because that's not actually our situation, is it? Our situation is. Uh, we talk I am press the button. Yes. But anyway, in our in so the the basic situation will be two people who are a bit grumpy and then somebody else who has to press the buttons. Yeah. So JT all, all we've got to say is we do the talk, you do the buttons. Yeah. So would you like to do that one more time so we've got that on file? Right. What was I saying? We do the talk. <laughs> okay. We do, do the, the talk, talk and you do the buttons. That's it. We're going to say that. We'll just say that one more time. <laughs> we do the talk. We do the talk and you do the buttons. That's it. Right, well, I think we got that there. <laughs> but somebody else could do that. Or we'll talk to them. We'll talk to them about that. And then the other, the other one is having a wonderful time, which we did a, a couple of years ago. I've looked it up on YouTube. We've still got several bits of it. Um, I'll explain this. I'll explain this again, Chris, because uh, you, you weren't you weren't here in the first part of the show. News from the Sun, a JG Ballard story, which there is a radio play of. You can find on the Internet Archive, and then there's another one called Having a Wonderful Time, which is about people who go on holiday and never come back. They do all kinds of relaxing things like um, painting, watercolor painting, amateur dramatics all kinds of things that will absorb their energy. But the basic idea is just to get rid of them, stop them being a problem in um, wherever they came from. Yeah. And I, I thought um, the basement of the Phoenix could be a similar sort of place. Did you? People go down to the basement, but they, they don't come out of it. Yes, I was going to say that. They never come out. 
<laughs> well, because they don't know the code. Like, oh, now you're giving away too much. <laughs> I think if if um if people sign a non-disclosure agreement, we might show them how to get out. Okay. But to all intents and purposes, as it would appear to people sitting in the bar upstairs, an infinite number of people could disappear into the basement. They could. And would anybody ever worry about them? Um, JD, would you worry if people disappeared into the basement? No, just just think, it'd be less people to feed. Be less, <laughs> less people, I can have their coffees. Great. <laughs> hey, well, that's 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 um, that's pretty much how the response would be, I think. Okay. But that would be an interesting development in itself, wouldn't it? If people just sat up or sat around in the in the cafe or the bar and said, "Well, I came along here earlier today with all my friends." Yeah. They seem to have vanished. <laughs> Should I worry about it? Well, eventually they might come down to the basement as well, or yeah. not. But we could. So that would be another one, and then the the. The, the other one is um, worried about Jim because I am worried about Jim I oh, yeah and last week we had quite a long conversation I think the reality is that there's nothing to worry about he's well, quite happy how he is on the good, the bad and the ugly show yeah. but we can have a play about this person who never touched the buttons was very frightened of the buttons and then one day he did the buttons. Somebody else went on holiday. He had to do the buttons. Yeah. And will he ever be the same again? Will I ever get my headphone jack? <laughs> well, yes, that's a good that's, point. That yes. is the, <laughs> the question we are all asking ourselves over the year. And so, uh, tune in and keep tuned into the programme and we'll let you know. <laughs> he didn't realise he needed headphones, did he? Not to start with. <laughs> no. And then he didn't realise he needed a headphone jack to fit into this studio, which, which was built he, some time ago. Which he got. You lent to him. Uh, no, I lent the other one my oh. headphone jack. Oh. So you think there's more dramatic tension in the, in the question, will you get your headphone jack back, than whether he'll ever want to go back to the buttons? Yeah. It's going to be the soap of the year. Well. Yeah. <laughs> So really Stay might, tuned think, to Funny <laughs> Kevin to find out if Chris ever gets his headphone jack back. Dun, 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 it's dun, a dun, dilemma. Dun. <laughs> okay. 